I am Dr. Peter Bridge. I am the academic chair of the Medical Laboratory Sciences groups. That's three programs, including Medical Laboratory Science, Diagnostic Cytology, and Genetics Technology. So all three uh, programs lead to graduates with the designation MLT. Genetics Technology and Diagnostic Cytology are advanced programs where there are specialist training genetics technology is in cytogenetics and molecular genetics uh, much of the time looking at DNA sequence for inherited diseases like cystic fibrosis or muscular dystrophy or looking at chromosomal disorders uh, down syndrome as an example Michener um, for labs is still open uh, we wear full per personal protective equipment so that uh, we can perform the hands-on skills and learning and uh, as I walk around the labs I will demonstrate some of this so we have enough space to be physically distanced but we also have face masks we have face shields uh, as well as the traditional lab coats and gloves so we can continue to operate in a very safe environment it's actually a very good segue into real life experience in clinical settings and uh, we are continuing to take the same number of students as well as to be able to operate both with lectures and with hands-on laboratory experience as normal. Hi, my name is Charlene Cannon. Um, the students know me as Charlie and I'm one of four faculty members for the Genetics Technology Program at Michener. The Genetics Technology Program runs for approximately 16 months, so about a year and a half. We have an intake every September and then there's a fall semester followed by a winter semester and those are what we refer to as our didactic semesters so a lot of lessons and labs and then this follows a really intense simulated summer semester where we make the lab resemble a real life hospital that's following a short break in the summer and then the next September those students go on to a clinical placement site we have clinical placement sites um, all across Canada from Calgary through to uh, St. John's Newfoundland and so uh, our clinical placements can take place at a variety of sites. And that length of that semester, so the practicum placement goes until that January. So all in all, it's about 16 or 17 months. The easiest way to describe a genetics technologist to someone who asks, or what do you do in genetics technology, is basically to say, when you walk into a hospital and you see nurses and doctors and all sorts of other staff there, you often go by a really big laboratory where there's a lot of rapid testing happens. Those are certified medical laboratory technologists and they specialize in disciplines such as hematology and urinalysis and several disciplines. When it comes to genetics technology, they're also medical laboratory technologists, except their specialties are in cytogenetics and molecular genetics. So they typically be found in a different lab focusing on diagnostic specimens that have to do with cancer or prenatal diagnosis or uh, familial disorders and diseases that run in families. Anything that can be brought back to either DNA, RNA, or chromosomes is what a genetics technologist would specialize in. What we typically like to share with visitors to open house is some of the sort of big concepts surrounding the two big disciplines that genetics is involved in. So one is cytogenetics, and that's the study of chromosome number and structure, and the other one is molecular genetics, which is actually the detection interpretation of um, nucleic acids, usually DNA, but sometimes RNA and proteins as well. And so some of the experiments that are typically done in a cytogenetics lab include taking a sample of blood and setting it up with some media and incubating that sample and letting it grow and divide so you, that you can sort of harvest the cells that you take from it and analyze chromosomes under a microscope. And then when it comes to DNA, there's tons of different ways you can actually extract DNA from a patient sample and then um, usually amplify that DNA through PCR or the polymerase chain reaction. And then there's tons of assays that we can use, everything from fragment analysis to actually sequencing base by base uh, the, the sequence of those of that DNA strand or that template that we're interested in um, applying fluorescent probes to the DNA so that if you have missing information in your genome or extra information those probes light up with a different colors that we're able to interpret and so uh, really the amount of, of 
technology available to us is, is limitless and it just keeps growing. And I think the demand for genetics technologists is, is, is very clear from that too. We have a 100% employment rate for our graduates. Actually, um, it's not unheard of that in students that haven't even graduated, the ones in their clinical placements, they already have uh, offers of employment before they, they're finished with the program. A good genetics technologist is typically very passionate about science to begin with and because it's a career of lifelong learning that passion will really fuel somebody uh, in the working world as a technologist to keep learning and to keep relevant and current um, but also just as a person genetics technologists are very detail oriented they're very meticulous they are very organized uh, they're very good with their hands and it is a very small community and there's not a lot of us in it so um, they you know they uphold relationships they're good communicators they're passionate about getting good answers out and about maintaining these relationships all across Canada with other genetics technologists amidst the global pandemic that is COVID uh, the genetics technologist has actually genetics technology program has been very resilient and very accommodating to uh, the fact that a lot of the learning had to be sort of switched to online models, which is fine because eventually the working genetics technologists will spend a lot of their time analyzing DNA sequences or chromosomes with a computer-based method. That being said, any of the skills that need to be learned hands-on from pipetting to harvesting to slide making, um, anything that actually needs to be used in the healthcare system after graduation, we're ensuring that they have the time here at Medchner to be able to do that. When students aren't learning uh, lectures and theories or applying sort of their analysis skills online and we need to teach them hands-on skills within the lab, we do divide our students into um, smaller groups and we already have four faculty and so sometimes that means one faculty for four students. So we do have dedicated time and you really get to learn those skills in a more condensed format but because of the increased one-on-one -on -one attention those skills are really emphasized and refined so that we're re really maximizing the use of time when you can be on site. Genetics technologists are in incredibly high demand. It's a very, very fulfilling career, whether you're, you know, able, lucky enough to, to teach the students that I do, or lucky enough to come to this program and eventually join our community of, of technologists. So, this is not immediately obvious, but one of the modifications we've made in the hematology lab due to COVID-19 is here we have a double-headed microscope so that the instructor and student can both look down at the same time at the slide, but we've installed a plexiglass barrier in between them so that they can sit facing each other and still see the microscope slide for instructional purposes. We have always insisted that students wash their hands after a lab. That's been traditional for many years. Hand washing is, of course, very important with our current pandemic of COVID-19. There are a few additional measures. We have here a spray bottle of caviside, which is a very potent disinfectant. Uh, we have spray bottles with alcohol for cleaning face shields. And so there are a few additional measures of uh, ways to ensure that we're not spreading bacteria or viruses either to the person or around the building. Under the Public Health Agency of Canada guidelines uh, in the microbiology lab, once the students have been in the lab, they're required to remove the face mask as they leave and to, to, there's a box of new ones at the door so that uh, as they exit, they change the masks as well.